The Paris Agreement is an international climate change treaty signed around this time last year by 192 countries and it aims to mitigate man-made global warming. It kicks in from this week, but will the targets it sets out be sufficient? Over half of the Arctic sea ice has so far been lost in the last 40 years and we may yet see the rest of it go too. That's according to a new study from the Max Planck Institute for Metrology in Hamburg. Kirsten Gopfreak spoke to the study's author, Dirk Nods. The numbers we got were quite striking in that for every tonne of CO2 that a person emits anywhere on this planet, three square metres of summer sea ice in the Arctic disappear. And this one tonne is, for example, emitted if you drive your car for 2,000 miles or so, or if you fly from London to New York and back. And so emitting this one tonne, wherever you do it, however you do it, always will melt three square metres of Arctic sea ice. This allows us for the first time to really intuitively grasp our individual contributions to to global climate change. Now I'm curious, what is my individual contribution then? I went and calculated my carbon footprint and I was shocked. 20 tonnes per year. One tonne means three square metre of sea ice loss. So 20 tonnes are 60 square metre because that is precisely what Dirk means by a direct linear relationship between CO2 emission and sea ice loss. By the end of my life, I will be responsible for a loss of sea ice area of 5,000 square metre, which is about 100 times the size of my current flat, if I continue to fly as much as I do now. I now understand that individual actions do make a difference. But how can Dirk be so sure about his numbers? So we started with a very simple correlation analysis. We simply checked how much CO2 humans have emitted in the past and how sea ice has evolved in the past. And simply plotting these two measures against each other gave a very, very linear relationship in the observations. And we found also a very linear relationship in all the model simulations from climate models that we looked at. And that makes us very convinced that this linear relationship really is robust and also allows us to, for example, infer the future evolution of Arctic sea ice directly from the observational record. If we continue to emit CO2 as we do now, by when would you expect sea ice to be gone completely in the summer? Well, if we keep emitting CO2 as we do now, then our study suggests that within the next two to three decades, the Arctic sea ice will be gone throughout summer. It always feels very strange to show pictures of the sea ice to my kids, knowing that once they are my age, um, all that might be gone. So why is it so important to have ice in the Arctic in the summer? Well, it depends on who you are. If you're a polar bear, um, it's basically your home that is disappearing there. From a climate perspective, the Arctic sea ice is a very important contributor of keeping the northern hemisphere cool in that it acts like a very big sunlight mirror. So most of the sunlight that hits the Arctic during summer is simply reflected by the ice cover. And if this ice cover continues to shrink, more and more of the sunlight will be absorbed by the ocean, and that then contributes to a very strongly amplified warming at very high latitudes in the Arctic, which then has consequences also in mid-latitudes. There are a number of studies out there now which suggest that because of the weakening of the jet stream as the sea ice retreats, We might observe more extreme weather events, for example, in Central Europe, in the US and Canada, throughout Russia, simply because the sea ice in the Arctic is disappearing. There are consequences for shipping, of course, with the retreat of the ice cover. Um, It might be possible to use shipping routes through the Arctic that are blocked by sea ice today. And so there are really a lot of consequences for all sorts of players um, that are all related to this disappearance of a very, very beautiful landscape up there. Is the Paris Agreement sufficient? Could we preserve the sea ice in the Arctic if we manage to limit the increase of temperature to 2 degree? I mean, the Paris Agreement will be effective this week. Yes, the, the Paris Agreement calls for a 2 degree global warming target, but also calls for the possibility of trying to reach 1.5 degree global warming target. And the numbers that we found regarding sea ice suggest very strongly that the two degree global warming target will not be sufficient to allow Arctic summer sea ice to survive during summer. Once we have released 1000 billion tons of CO2, the Arctic sea ice is gone and the global warming has reached two degrees. Sobering, isn't it? And to put that number into perspective, we're currently pumping out something like 35 billion tons of carbon dioxide a year. And if you then factor in the effects of deforestation, population growth and industrialisation, we've probably, scientists reckon, got less than 20 years to save the Arctic from a watery end. That was Dirk Knotts and his study was published in Science this week.